Venturing into the unknown is scary. Trading our modern comforts for oftentimes very uncomfortable endeavors may seem like a step in the wrong direction to some. Yet, in 2016, I, along with nine other friends, made the journey west to wrap the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon for 21 days straight. No internet, no bathrooms, no showers or beds, a complete immersion into disconnectivity in nature that is quite hard to come by these days. This was a very pivotal year in my life, and not just for the obvious reasons either. See, for the last three years I had been roaming up and down the east coast, but had always been a little hesitant to head out west as I was completely unfamiliar with the area and didn't really have any friends out there at the time. When I committed to the Grand Canyon trip, it was exactly the impetus I needed to finally pack everything I owned up and take the leap of faith to journey westward. Westward to places I had heard of yet knew nothing about. Westward where everyone was a stranger, yet also a potential new friend. Westward where every road bend, every trail, every town, every day held something new and exciting. Was I hesitant? Yeah. Was I a bit nervous and scared still? Of course. Was it possible I was going to fail completely and come back east with my tail between my legs? Well, no. But mainly because I have no tail. When I left for the Grand Canyon, it was in my 2007 Mazda hatchback named Sheila. We weren't exactly riding in style, but I managed to pare down all of my belongings enough to squeeze everything in fairly neatly, all while leaving just enough room for one other passenger and a few of their belongings too. I just got my stuff in and that leaves, that leaves Brian with approximately that space. Just enough, not a problem. I've made this setup work for the past two years exploring out west and the three before that traveling up and down the east coast, using Sheila as my traveling storage unit, my camping setup as a portable home and local cafes as my workspace, I was able to live full time on the road, but there were definitely more than a few things keeping me from reaching my full potential. Here, I, I got stuck last night getting in. So this morning, I'm just gonna punch it and go. I did it. That was so much easier. I thought I was boned last night. I got stuck right there at the entrance. This time is different though. This time I have my van. And with it, I feel more prepared than ever to accept any call to adventure that comes my way. And right now, the mountains are calling, so I must go. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. The first time I ventured west, I was fortunate enough to have my trusty navigator, DJ, and best friend Chance along for the ride. This time, I'm blessed yet again with another friend to caravan with, Brian, who you guys all know from the YouTube channel BKXC. The very next week, Brian and I met up in Asheville for some breakfast to catch up, and I was quickly reminded how much I truly enjoy his company. I get to see and hang out with one of my favorite people, Brian, <laughs> BKXC, all the way from the other coast, has taken, has driven his car right there, all the way across. 6,000 miles. 6,000 so miles. At long last, it was time to bid farewell to Asheville for the season. So Brian and I made plans to head out the very next morning. Today's the day, I'm heading west. But not before saying goodbye to the man, the myth, the hacking legend. Wait, where's Seth? All right, we finished breakfast and Seth is a no show. <laughs> so we gotta go hunt this dude down and wake his ass up. <laughs> morning, sunshine. Right, morning. <laughs> I'm usually not the person that does this shit. <laughs> yeah, who is? <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> hey, guess who was at breakfast? This guy. <laughs> Saying goodbye has never been my strong suit, and it's even more difficult to say to family, which is exactly what Seth, Amy, and Little Drama have become to me. So I prefer to stick with, I love ya, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for everything, guys. Alright, goodbyes have been said. <sighs> Now it's time to get on the road and I'm I'm really excited. I will um I'll check in with you guys. This is a big moment. I'm gonna turn on some music and take it all in. Hitting the road to go cross country, it's a special thing. I always get so stoked. But also a little anxious, I'm not gonna lie. And we're off for the first ever cross country road trip in the van. I am so stoked. There is something about the open road that just feels so right. 
Brian and I laid down the hammer on the first day with a pretty easy going 13 hour drive taking us all the way to good old Higginsville, Missouri. We rolled in pretty late as we didn't exactly get the Alpine start we had really intended on. Brian found us a pretty sweet spot uh, outside of Kansas City uh, where we can not only both park and, and uh, sleep safely but also get showers because I feel like super greasy after that, that long of a day on the road. And um, if I needed to, which I don't, I could also do laundry. So it's a pretty sweet, pretty sweet little deal. And there's a pool. Been hanging out, got some work done. Really enjoyed uh, the night. We actually just realized how freaking late it is. We've just yeah. been like shooting the shit in the van. It's actually super enjoyable. Look what Brian's got. He's got the uh, trusty Paco pad ready. So I was just thinking, it is, it is kind of a tight fit. Let's see how this works. Let's show everyone how, how it works when you're a guest in the, in the van. Pillow? And the, uh, oh wait, no, that's yep. just the thumbnail pillow. You don't need yep. that. No, Actually, I don't know. Do you like it? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Amy's not going to let you in the house next time. <laughs> awesome. All right. It is morning time. And uh, we're waking up to a thunderstorm, which would be great if we didn't have anywhere to go, because just hang out, make coffee, watch a movie, just be super lazy, but ooh, it's lightning. But we got places to be. The next morning, it was right back to business, but not before we made a quick breakfast and coffee stop at, you guessed it, I mean, I am with Brian after all, the Golden Arches of McDonald's. All right, day two is officially underway. Let the drive begin! The second day was even easier, as we only had 10 hours to go before we found ourselves rolling into a Walmart right back where it all began. Colorado. There's the dude. There's who I'm looking for. <laughs> I just parked there just cuz. We could park anywhere. Like um, There's actually better. some really good parking in the back if you want to just follow me. I yeah. saw. Cool. Welcome to the first day in Colorado, guys. I feel like I'm home. Brian had to head out the very next day, and although our time was short, it was so great to get to hang with him again. It's pretty crazy to think that just two years and some change ago, Brian and I met up right here in Salida and had the time of our lives riding together for the first time, thus beginning our great friendship and inspiring me to begin working on my channel consistently. Ah. I am really loving being back here in Salida. For those of you guys that don't know, this is actually where I started the channel in the first place. I was working here, uh, I was living here working at Absolute Bikes as a bike mechanic. I had been traveling the country for, uh, I don't know, about eight months and I, I found this place and I really loved it and I kind of wanted to settle down and just focus on riding for the season, so I stayed. There's a lot of history here and um, I think it'll forever hold a special place in my heart. I love coming back here to visit. It always helps to put things into perspective and keep me grounded. It's really important to me that despite the success of my channel and the amount that has changed in my life over this past year, I remain vigilant and mindful to stay true to who I am and the life that I want to lead. The last thing that I want to do is to blindly let the quest for more views or more subs and more success slowly lead me in a direction only to look back later on down the road and wonder, where the hell am I? So here we go. Time to get back to my roots. While in Salida, I met back up with Nate, my mechanic, mentor, and friend from my days at Absolute Bikes, and he let me park my van out front of his place. Many of you will remember Nate from earlier this year when we raised money to help him with the three surgeries required for him to recover from a gruesome mountain bike accident. And, well, I've got some pretty damn heartwarming news for you all. We're four months out from his surgeries, and thanks to everyone that chipped in, Nate and I are able to go on a ride together. Thanks so much for everybody that supported me in my injury. You know, like, couldn't have done it without the help of Alex and all the single track sampler supporters. Um, it really, like, that GoFundMe made a huge difference. The Malbai community really blows my mind sometimes. I really couldn't have gotten back to Colorado at a better time. They had been receiving some rain over the last week, so the dirt was mint. And you better believe Nate and I took full advantage of that.
During this time, I really refocused my attention on doing what makes me happy. I lived each day in the moment and never turned down an opportunity to adventure when presented. I found myself going out on soul rides without my chest cam in the evenings to balance out long days of work and hell. We even attended some yoga classes to soothe up our sore muscles. I am currently working on a massive project, but I'm making a concerted effort to be a little bit more balanced with my work play life. So it's like six o'clock at night. We're gonna take off, get a little evening pedal and a little sunset pedal. It's pretty nice out. <sighs> this is what it's all about. Been hanging with Nate, riding every day. Even if it's just a little bit out for an hour ride right now. Come on. Life is good, my friends. Anyone looking for a shuttle vehicle or a home on wheels? For your low low, the low low price of six grand, you could have this 10 wheeled behemoth. Six by six. Holy. I'm going with sub seven miles per gallon. What do you guys think? This beast isn't an isolated sighting here in Salida either. If you wander the streets of the town, you'll find a plethora of travel rigs coming in many different shapes, styles, and sizes, and that number is about to grow by one. That's right. The week I arrived at Nate's was his final week in his apartment, which meant while I was working on videos in my van, Nate was working on building a van of his own. Have you had a build in this in this van already? Yeah, I mean, I lived out of a Previa for like... Oh, you've already had a Previa before this one? Dude, this was like my fourth Previa. Oh, I didn't realize that. So you just love these I'm a, vans, I'm dude. A Previa kid. <laughs> a few years ago, you could pick a good one up for $1,500, $2,000. What'd you get yours for? $2,200. Yeah, you flip the seat all the stuff first. You know, the seats are only back to this. And up. this is what you have to do to change your oil. You grab this lever, and then this comes down. That's oh. where you fill your oil and your chain fluid. No oh, shit. And the engine. Yeah, it's so right the engine's that underneath engine. this seat. I want a status update though. Yeah. How, how's, how's shit going? Yeah, there's the second piece of standing up, and then the last piece is upside down. Nate was telling me that he's decided to change the van build a little bit and make it a little bit more modular, a little bit more sectional so that when he's on his own, he can empty it a little bit more easily and, and clean it out. I think that was a good idea. What's going on? Holy Jeez, shit. Guys. Oh my God. Good size, huh? They're huge. Yeah. What the? Crazy, right? Wow. What's up, dude? Although I'm super stoked for Nate and his new adventure mobile, I will say there are a few mostly selfish reasons I'm gonna miss his place. It's basically van life law that you never pass up the opportunity for two things when living on the road. One, a hot shower. And two, washing clothes. Occasionally you have an awesome friend like Nate that lets you come in and use his place and uh, yeah, I've got like an enormous load of laundry going in here and uh, I just got all cleaned up in the shower. I feel great. That being said, now that Nate is hitting the road, I'm sure this won't be the last that we see of him. And I'm really stoked that I got to be here during the outfitting of his Previas. It's the perfect proof of what I wish someone had been here to tell me when I first started dreaming of hitting the road. That it doesn't matter what sort of vehicle you have or how fancy of an outfit it is, you just gotta go for it. Venturing into the unknown is a scary thing to do. But in my experience, I find that if you can manage to get to the other side of that fear, to embrace the unknown instead of hiding from it, you'll be rewarded with the most amazing sense of adventure, excitement, and freedom that you've ever felt before. Every day is lived intentionally. Every moment is its own. I feel alive. can see it. That is so pretty.
what a wild ride this year has been. And I really hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of a recap of from earlier on in the year. I know I really enjoyed making that video. It was a ton of work, but in the end, I am really happy to stop and like slow down and make this this sort of more in-depth video every now and then because it kind of is like leaving a legacy. Like this video will always be here online for me. And on top of that, I really want to help throw some inspiration the way of anyone else who is kind of dreaming of picking up and hitting the road in one way or another to let them know that it is possible. But I also want to paint it in a realistic light, which I feel like I'm able to do through my experiences and my words in the video like this. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, and you know, if you're still here, you probably did. Don't forget to go down and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, for some crazy reason, subscribe to the channel, go click that subscribe button so you can keep up with my future travels and future van videos. And if you really, really enjoy the channel and wanna help support the production of more videos like this, or even hell, just buy me a beer, cause that's cool too. I'm gonna put a link to my Patreon right down here in the description below. And if you've done all of those or none of them, all good, I'm just extremely stoked to have you here. And until next time, you know what to do. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked. I'll see you there.